Well, tell, tell us about it. Like a right. Right. Um, all right. So uh, this is a series of three lectures, and I'll start by explaining uh, basic things about Nakajima queer varieties. Namely, I'm going to define them and to uh, tell you some basic properties. Okay. So the plan for today is to first talk about Hamiltonian reductions. Uh, then construction of few varieties. <coughs> and finally, we'll talk about properties. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's start with a general setting. Uh, capital R is going to denote uh, finite dimensional uh, C vector space. Uh, and G acting on R is going to be a reductive algebraic group. Okay? Then what I can do, I can form the cotangent bundle of R. Of course, this is just R plus R dual. And the space carries a canonical symplectic form. And it carries an action of G, of course, which preserves the form and moreover is Hamiltonian. Uh, what uh, this means is that uh, there is a moment map <coughs> which I will call mu, and this goes from t star of r uh, to g dual. So let me write uh, a formula. So I need to define mu of a pair r and alpha, where r is an r, and alpha is an r dual. So it's a, it's a function on, 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 g, on g, so I need to explain how to pair it with an element of g. And by definition, uh, this is going to be alpha paired with x applied to r. Okay. So one thing that you quickly notice about this map mu is that it's G equivalent. And in particular, G preserves the preimage of zero. Now Hamiltonian reductions I care about are, are quotients. of uh, the section. Okay? Uh, well, let me say a bit more about this quotient. So we are working on algebraic geometric setting. We are going to consider JIT quotients. Uh, for this, we need to fix a character. Uh, let me call it theta. So it's going to be a group homomorphism from G to the multiplicative group. And starting from this character, I can form the JIT quotient, which I'm going to denote like this, mu minus one of zero, two lines, theta g. So I'm not going to define it, but let me say something about it. So first of all, what does it parameterize? So it parameterizes Uh, closed G orbits in the so-called uh, set of semi-stable points. So denote it like this. With superscript theta SS. 
uh, what uh, that thing is, it's um, uh, the set of all points so, you know, R alpha being mu minus 1 of 0 uh, such that there is a positive integer and a polynomial of mu minus 1 of 0 uh, with the following properties such that uh, first of all, G acts on F by multiplying it with a character theta to power n. That's the first property. And the second property is that F computed at R alpha is different from zero. Okay? So I take all such polynomials for all possible positive n, and I throw away some varieties of zeros, okay? So I get some open subset in mu minus 1 of 0. Uh, one very important special case here is when theta is trivial. The trivial character, which I will denote by 0, So when theta is equal to 0, I can take f equal to 1. So the notion of semi-stable point is vacuous. And uh, the corresponding j equation is an affine variety, or more generally affine scheme. Uh, which is a spectrum of the algebra of invariant functions on mu minus 1 of 0. Okay? In general, I get something which is projective over this guy. So general theta, I have projective morphism Uh, let me call it phi from mu minus 1 quotient with respect to theta of g uh, to this fellow. Okay? So I have some uh, I have a bunch of uh, schemes. And the schemes have a very important property. Uh, therefore, so. So, on the structure shift for such a scheme, you can define a Poisson bracket on the shift. Uh, meaning we have a bracket on the structure shift. And let me tell you briefly how this bracket is obtained. So I need to pick two local G invariant functions. Or mu minus 1 of 0. Local means they are defined on some open subsets. And I need to define a bracket of these two functions. The way how this is done is that we extend, so we pick some extensions, f tilde and g tilde, uh, on t star of r. Okay? They don't need to be g invariant. And then we define the bracket of f and g as follows. 
we take the bracket of f tilde and g tilde, a bracket of functions on t star of r, and then we restrict it to mu minus 1 of 0. And a nice exercise, if you haven't seen it before, is to check that this is well defined. OK. So one remark to finish this discussion is that uh, if we have a nice special case, namely g acts freely on the semi-stable locus, Well, then, of course, all the orbits are closed. But moreover, the corresponding Hamiltonian reduction, which parameterizes just all orbits, is smooth. And this Poisson structure is symplectic. And you can also take this as an exercise. So this finishes my uh, discussion of uh, Hamiltonian reductions. And now I'm going to proceed to constructing a Kojima Q varieties, which are going to be special cases of this construction. Not surprisingly, we start with a quiver, which I will call Q. And formally, it's a quadruple Q1, Q1, Q, Q0, Q1, T, and H. And informally, it's an oriented graph. So the meaning of those symbols uh, is as follows, uh, Q0 and Q1 are finite sets known respectively as uh, vertices and arrows. And T and H are maps. So T and H are maps from Q1 to Q0. Uh, which are tail and head of an arrow. So if I have an arrow A, like such, then T of A is here, and H of A is here. Okay? So uh, to define a representation in the group, I need two more pieces of data. Namely, I will fix two Q0 tuples of non-negative integers, V and W, known as uh, dimension and frame. And I will consider vector spaces of the corresponding dimensions. So capital VI is going to be C to dimension small VI. And capital WI is going to be C to WI. Here I is Q0. So to each vertex in my quiver, I assign two vector spaces of prescribed dimensions. And then I can produce a vector space which I will denote by R or RQVW, which is going to be the following. It's going to be the sum over all arrows of the space home from VTA to VHA. <laughs> plus the sum over all vertices 
form from vi to wi. So if I just consider the first term, the first sum, it's going to be the representation space of a given quiver. And then uh, for each vertex, I take a prescribed number of covectors for this space. OK? Q0, right? thank you. OK? And then on this space, I have an action of the group G, which depends only on V. And then just the product of general linear groups acting on the spaces vi, one for each vertex. OK? It naturally acts on this space by changing bases in the spaces vi's. OK? So this puts me in the setting that I uh, described. Uh, and I'm going to consider Hamiltonian reductions. For this, I need to fix a character. So what is the uh, group of characters? Well, it can be identified with Q0 copies of Z in the following way. If I have a, uh, some element theta, which is just a collection of integers, uh, the corresponding character will send the collection of GIs to the product of determinants of GI to power theta i. Okay? So, once I have a collection of integers, I can form a Poisson variety, the Nakajima Q variety. And that's what um, we are going to be interested in. Let me give you some examples of what kind of varieties we get using this construction. And let's start with the simplest quiver possible where I have a single vertex and no arrows. So uh, the set Q0 is equal to just 1 and Q1 is empty. So, what is my space R is just home from a vector space V to a vector space W. And G is just a general linear group of this space V. You can write down the moment map explicitly. So, uh, first of all, R plus R dual is going to be home from V to W plus home from W to V, where R star is identified with this. We are trace pairing. Okay? And an exercise is at the moment map mu will send a pair of linear maps, x and y, to minus y composition with x, which leaves in G dual nothing else is in the morphisms of V. So next, I need to pick uh, a character. And I assume that my character will be positive. So theta, which is an integer, so assume theta is bigger than 0. Uh, the corresponding stability condition transforms to saying that the map X <coughs> is 
is injective. So x embeds the space V into space W. And then I'm going to take the quotient of this. I tell you that the quotient is going to be uh, the cotangent bundle to Grassmannian of v-dimensional subspaces in the space W. Why? Well, x gives rise to a point in the Grassmannian after you take the quotient. And then what is y? Well, y is a point, y is a map from w mod v to v, and you easily recognize the cotangent space to a Grassmannian. Okay? Uh, it's important here. If C T is negative, the condition is that Y is subjective. And we'll get a dual gross money. Uh, Cotangent bundle to dual gross money. All right. So that's an example. Uh, let me uh, explain some generalizations. Well, this example, example one prime. So here my quiver is going to be a type A dinking quiver oriented from Uh, right to left, and then uh, the framing is going to be in the last vertex only. So W, you'll have the form W1, and so on, 0, 0, 0. And then I assume that all theta i's are positive. That's one choice of a stability condition. So the corresponding Q variety in this case, is going to be the cotangent bundle to a partial flux variety. So it's a cotangent bundle of the flux variety. Uh, in the space W of this dimension, let me put W1, and then the dimension of subspaces are V1 and so on, Vk. And maybe I should add that if we consider general framing here, all these maps are going to be injective, and then by the similar reasoning to the previous example, you get precisely T-style flux. So I should add that for general framing, you get so-called parabolic slaughter varieties. Just a note for experts. OK. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No. You can have empty partial flux varieties. So uh, I mean, there is no guarantee. Well, I mean, this. So variety is, is long empty, it contains zero, but there is no guarantee that there will be semi-stable points. Okay, so uh, before I proceed, let me introduce some notation and make one remark. So the notation is that M theta Yes. Uh, do they exist corresponding affine microgenic Not that I know. Uh, so I will write m theta or sometimes m theta of v w for the corresponding Hamiltonian reduction for the corresponding Akajima variety. It's my Akajima variety. And then an important remark is that M theta is independent 
of orientation of Q. So yes. So when we change the orientation, uh, basically uh, the corresponding spaces T star of R are uh, the same. With the symplectic structure, the group is the same. Stability condition is the same. Everything is the same. Okay, <clears throat> now I want to give you one more example, and then we'll get to properties. So example number two. So the next simplest quiver is going to be the Jordan quiver. One arrow and one loop. So Q0 it consists of one element, and Q1 also of one element. So let me uh, let me do the same thing. Let me identify the space R. It's now going to be the direct sum of two things uh, and amorphisms of V plus home from V to W. The group is still uh, GLV. Uh, T star of R uh, is going to be uh, quadruples, so two copies of endomorphisms of V plus home from V to W plus home from W to V. And let me write uh, an element of the space as a quadruple A, B, X, Y. Where X and Y are as before, and A and B are endomorphisms of V. So the moment map the moment map mu will take such a quadruple and send it to the bracket of A and B minus Yx. Okay? Then uh, we need to choose a stability character and form the Hamiltonian reduction. Let me now uh, take theta to be negative. Then the semi-stable part in mu minus 1 of 0 will consist of all quadruples a, b, x, y such that, well, the moment map condition is satisfied. The bracket of a and b with y, x, uh, the bracket of a and b equals to y, x. And then uh, I need uh, this semi-stability condition. The semi-stability condition tells me that uh, the image of y inside of v generates v as a module over the subalgebra generated by these two operators. So this is a, the space that I'm going to quotient out. Just note that the action of G is free on this space. So I'm just parametrizing orbits. And the description of the orbit space is easy when W is equal to 1. So when W equal to 1, then this stability condition, so the condition that A, B, X, Y lie in the semi-stable locus in mu minus 1 of 0 will imply for you 
that x is equal to 0. And therefore, a and b commute. That's a nice problem for, for, for the school participants. So what I get, well, I parameterize a pair of commuting matrices plus a cyclic vector. And this is classical description of the Hilbert scheme. So in this case, m theta is the Hilbert scheme of v points in C2. It parameterizes co-dimension v ideals in the algebra of polynomials in two variables. And let me also to point out that M0, just the, just the usual quotient of mu minus 1 of 0, is uh, the symmetric power of C2. So the quotient of C2 to power V modulates V. Okay? Let me also point out that for general V, general W, what I get is the Giesecker moduli space. Which is a generalization of the Hilbert scheme. And finally, let me give you the last example, which is an example with a star. It's going to be a bit, too, uh, a bit more advanced. So let me uh, now pick a finite subgroup of SL2. <coughs> and as we know, such things are parameterized by uh, affine Binkin diagram. via Mackay correspondence. Okay? Uh, so what can I do? I can take the corresponding quiver by choosing some orientation on this diagram. Uh, I can take V of the form N delta, where delta is in decomposable imaginary root, I take, can take W to be just one dimensional framing in the extending vertex. Extending vertex is one that you add to the usual Dinkin diagram to get a fine Dinkin diagram. And I can consider the corresponding Nakajima Q variety M0 and delta epsilon zero. What am I going to get is the generalization of, of this guy. So uh, I'm going to get the quotient of C2n by the risk product group as n semi-direct with gamma to the n. Okay? So gamma act on C2s, each on its own copy, and Sn just permutes this copy. And then for generic theta, for theta generic, m theta is going to be a symplectic resolution of this guy. Resolution does depend on theta, even up to isomorphism, yeah. in general. Okay, so just to uh, just to give some something concrete here. So let's consider the case when gamma is a dihedral group. So it will consist of uh, matrices of the form 
uh, epsilon 0, 0, epsilon 2 minus 1, and 0, epsilon minus epsilon 2 minus 1, 0, where epsilon is a root of unity of order 2L. Then the corresponding affine Dinkin quiver is like this. Extend type D. Uh, the dimensional vector we take is of the following kind. It's n on the boundary vertices and 2n on the internal vertices. And then the framing is one dimensional at the extending vertex. Okay? And this data provi provides us with, with this Nakajima varieties. <coughs> All right. So finally, um, I'm going to explain some properties that are going to be important for my purposes and maybe for purposes of some other speakers. So first of all, I'm going to answer the question of when, meaning for which theta, the action of G on the semi-stable locus is free. And so the corresponding quotient will be smooth and symplectic. And that's the first place in this theory where the corresponding Katz-Moody algebra appears. So uh, I have my Q and I can view it as a Dinkin diagram. And this gives me a Cartan matrix. Uh, let me assume that it doesn't have loops. Although it's not necessary for the discussion. Okay. Uh, so I have a Cartan matrix. Uh, which I will call A, it's a matrix of size Q0. And the diagonal entries are going to be equal to 2. In the gel case, you need to modify this, of course, when there are loops. More diagonal vertices is uh, minus number of arrows. Uh, between i and j. Okay. For example, if I have this little fellow here, two vertices and three arrows like this, uh, this will give me matrix 2 minus 3 minus 3, 2. Okay. What we do with Cartan matrices? Well, we can form the corresponding Katz-Moody algebra. So we can form Katz-Moody algebra hmm? No, no, no. Between, uh, between two vertices, regardless of orientation. So my everything that I do is independent of orientation. So yes. So we get a symmetric Cartan matrix. Uh, right. So we get Kasmudi algebra, which I will call G of Q, and it's generated by a collection of generators E i, H i, and F i where i is in Q0, 
subject to the usual relations, including set relations. Of usual relations. In particular, when Q is Dinkin, I recover usual semi simple Lie algebra. If Q is affine Dinkin, I recover affine Kasmudi algebra. Okay, so I have a Kasmudi algebra. Now I can talk about roots and about positive roots. So GQ gives rise to positive roots <laughs> and I want to view them as elements in Z big O equals in zero Q zero. So it's just Q zero tuples of non-negative integers. And I of course assume that simple roots are coordinate vectors. And then I just send the root to its coefficients, right? So how does it help me to answer my question that I posed in the beginning? <coughs> so there is a following theorem. Uh, due to Nakajima, is uh, G acts on the semi stable locus freely if theta is generic, meaning the following. So let me write this condition. So the usual scalar product of theta with V prime, which is just the, you know, the sum of products of coordinates, is non-zero for all V prime which are positive roots that are less or equal than my dimension vector v. And less or equal means component-wise. Uh, it doesn't depend on w, but this is a uh, just sufficient condition. It's not necessary. Uh, v i prime less or equals than v i for all i and q zero. And if you require it for all w, become is also necessary. Yes, I think so. I mean, for 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 almost any w, it's necessary. <coughs> okay. So, I take the uh, hyperplanes defined by this condition, this product equal to zero. I throw them away, and everything else is. Generic meaning that the action of G on the semi-stable points is free. And I get a smooth symplectic quiverit. So M theta is smooth and symplectic. Actual roots. That the first properties that I'm going to explain, that I was going to explain. Now let's talk about symplectic resolutions. So it turns out that Nakajima Kiyoma writers do give you examples of symplectic resolutions. So I pick uh, my theta to be generic, and then I have a projective morphism from a smooth symplectic variety to some affine variety, which I was calling, call, uh, which I called phi. 
So this fellow here is projective. Well, it doesn't need to be a resolution. For example, because this thing here can be empty. And this thing here is never empty. What I can do, I can uh, consider the Stein factorization. And let me denote the intermediate variety by m. So this morphism from m to m0 is finite. And this morphism here has connected fibers. And m is normal. So that's a characterization of the Stein factorization, if you want. So here I got, I've got some normal affine variety. And good news, the morphism from m to m theta to m is always resolution. So let me state some facts about this. <clears throat> First of all, as notation suggests, M. Hmm? No, in general. I mean, uh, I don't know any, any, any general results that will tell you that this is just the image. The image may not be normal to start with. Uh, so fact number one, as my notation suggests, M is independent of the choice of theta. And what it is, well, uh, it's a spectrum. Yes, of generic theta, yes. And M is just, of course, a spectrum of the algebra of global functions on M theta. Uh, the second fact is that, indeed, rho from M theta to M is a symplectic resolution, and Roma gave a definition, so I refer you to his lecture. Finally, uh, under favorable conditions, M, M, and 0 are the same thing. So if moment map mu is flat, then M is the same as M0. OK? No, it's not small. It's, it's, not, it's, not, it's, it's, it's never small in this situation. M is equal to M0, yes. Uh, no. I mean, under, uh, under the, well, M0 is always normal and reduced, but it may be too big. And actually, let me give you an example of this, our remark. So in example one, uh, where we had the, our exciting quiver one vertex, no loops, uh, then mu is flat if and only if 2v is less or equal than w. OK? And example 2, mu is flat, regardless of the values of v and w. Example two was this game. But if double, it should be not equal, yeah? yeah, that. You're right. 
Okay. So uh, this was the second property I need, and uh, finally, let me explain the main motivation behind starting Q varieties, at least the main initial motivation of Kojima. And this is uh, GQ action. So again, I'm interested in uh, generic theta. generic theta, and then you can show that the homology group <coughs> with complex coefficients or with any other coefficients, in fact, uh, is independent of theta. All these guys are, in fact, diffeomorphic for theta generic. And a fact, well, I mean facts, that are all due to Nakajima are the following. So what we can do, we can fix W and take the sum of these homologies for all V. And on this, Space, I have a natural action of GQ. Now, inside, I can take middle homology and this is a sub representation. So, what middle means, so middle is the complex dimension of m theta, and this is just uh, two dimensions of r minus two dimensions of g, because the action is free, okay? And uh, this rep sub-representation is easy to describe. So the next fact is that the sum of middle homologies is, uh, let me introduce this notation, L sub omega. So the meaning of this symbol is uh, irreducible uh, integrable representation with highest weight omega. So omega looks almost like W. And this is, in fact, is W, meaning that uh, omega, by definition, is the sum over all vertices Wi times pi sub i, where this fellow here is fundamental weight. corresponding to the root number i, okay? And moreover, what you can do is you can, tr you can characterize each summand inside of this fellow. So the individual homology group, H middle of M theta VW, is the weight space, which I will denote by L omega with nu in square bracket, which looks like a V. So this is a weight space of weight nu, which by definition is omega minus the sum over i and q0, vi times alpha i, where well, alpha i is simpler. Okay? So, 
using a Kojima queer varieties, you can study the representation theory of GQ or of its analogs such as quantum group, a fine quantum group, and so on, using geometry of queer varieties. That's a primary reason why they are important. And I think we'll see some more recent developments in this school. Uh, that's it for today. Uh, you can ask me questions, or I can uh, give you an advertisement for the next two lectures to come. Give advertisement. advertisement. So, lecture two. Uh, in lecture two, I'm going to talk about quantizations of pure varieties. So I'm going to produce a bunch of uh, associative algebras. And I'm going to uh, tell you an answer for a very basic question. Uh, how to count uh, finite dimensional reducible representations. Of uh, this quantization. which is my joint work with Roma Bezrukovnikov from some time ago. And uh, so this work is a 90-page paper. Uh, we are not going to discuss all of this. We will discuss one ingredient for this count. Uh, which are wall crossing functors. that implicitly appeared in Roma's lecture. Some derived equivalences between uh, categories of modules, although in Roma's lecture there was characteristic P, in my lectures it will be always be characteristic zero. So this was an advertisement. Yes. Other, other questions? <laughs> the answer is oh. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Could you give answers to this question? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's thank uh, the speaker. What's an example of uh,